Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you a really cool, new, innovative product form. This is a micellar oil. Now we all know about micellar waters and we all know about cleansing oils. Now cleansing oils and cleansing balms are great at removing your waterproof makeup, but because they're cleansing oils or balms, they're very oil based, which means then you usually have to wash them off with another wash step. And of course, we all know our micellar waters, and some of these can have really good results with your waterproof makeup, while others maybe aren't quite up to the challenge. Introducing the micellar oil. Now, the great thing about this product is it's fantastic at removing that waterproof makeup. It's got oil in it to help remove that waterproof makeup, but it's also got a very special material I want to introduce you to that means it washes off easily after it's removed the makeup as well. So it's a one step product that's very gentle on the skin and washes off readily with no oily residue. So let me show you how it's made. Now, first of all, I wanna show you how effective it is. This is a heap of mascara I've put onto my hand. I've used a heap here because I wanna show you just how effective this product is. So if I apply a little bit of my micellar oil, and then you'll see the mascara rubs off really easily. Now, even just like that, it's not oily at all. I, I don't even need to include a rinse step, but I can rinse that easily with some water and it just washes straight off. There is none of that greasy residue that's left from a cleansing oil or balm. And as you could see, it was a really gentle and effective way to remove waterproof makeup. Now to make this product, we need to use Micromulse LB from Alchemy Ingredients. Now this is a material that's in the family of the Sucragel. So with all of these types of products, method is crucial. If you've ever used a sucra gel before, you'll understand the processing method I'm gonna show you today. If you've never used a sucra gel material before, you might enjoy some of my other videos with sucra gel, including a video that shows you how to use and fix it if something goes wrong. Using these materials enables you to create some really innovative product forms, but the way you build the formulas and the way you have to process the products is very different to normal but I promise you once you've mastered the art, you won't turn back. It allows you to make some really innovative and different product forms that simply can't be achieved using other materials. Now, you can contact us for the free formula. I've actually got another little bit of information, a little bit of a treat here for my regular viewers. I do get asked often, how do we incorporate a butter material into a cold process product? So this would normally be a cold process only formula. But like I say, I get asked a lot, how do I incorporate a butter into a cold process product? So I'm gonna show you how. Now in here, I have some shea butter with some caprylic capric triglycerides. I'm just going to heat this gently. And this is how we would incorporate butters into otherwise cold process products. Remember, we don't need to heat both phases all I wanna do is heat this to above the melting point of my butter. So when I get to about 38, 40 degrees, this butter will melt nicely into my oil. Then I just give it a little bit of a stir and it will not set back out. So I'm showing you this, you don't necessarily need to make this product with the butter in it, but like I say, I get asked. So I thought I'd include it in this video as a bit of a treat. So now that my butter has melted, and remember we've only needed to heat that just above the melting point of the butter. I've given it a little bit of a stir. I'll give it another little stir for you. And it will remain homogeneously mixed in its liquid form throughout my oil phase. So if you're ever making a cold processed product, I know that's warming it slightly, but it's not like making an emulsion where you have to heat both phases to 75 degrees. So we're still very much in the cold zone with the processing we're gonna do for our micromulse. Now, another thing that's important about the micromulse, with a sucra gel, I tend to use a propeller blade. With the micromulse, I have found my dispersing mixer, that's this one here, to be more effective. This needs really high speed mixing 
and I've used medium shear dispersing blade. Just remember, it's not necessarily the speed of the mixer that makes it low, medium or high shear, it's the actual mixing device itself. So our propeller is low shear, this dispersing element is medium shear and a homogenizer would be high shear regardless of the RPM that I use to mix. We also have a great video on mixing equipment that explains this further. So now in here I have my Micromoles LB and I have some glycerin. I'm just going to add some water to this. Now I don't need a preservative in this formula because I don't have enough available water to permit any microbial growth. I know a lot of you have questions about preservatives. Please search the YouTube channel. We've got a couple of videos about preservatives and we also have our Can I Use a Different Preservative workshop that might be of interest to you. In this formula, I don't need it because I don't have enough available water to sustain growth. Now that that's mixed together, I'm going to set it up with my dispersing element. I'm just going to add my fragrance to my oil phase. Give that a little stir. And then I'm just going to add my oil phase to the micromoles phase slowly and in increments. Now just like when you're using sucre gel, it's the first additions in particular that are the most important. Remember you only add a little bit at a time and you make sure it's stirred in thoroughly and you've got a nice glossy looking product before you add more. Once you've added all the oil phase, just keep mixing at that high speed using your medium shear dispersing element for a few minutes to make sure it's fully combined. Now another thing that's really important when you're using the Micromulse product, compared to your sucre gel for example, is on the day you make it, it will look very white and frothy. The foam is all trapped inside. You do need to leave it for a couple of days, around four days I found, and then you will have your product that looks beautifully translucent like this. Now one more benefit I want to show you of this product form and the materials used in it, which helps create this product form and functionality, is it also has a nice milky wash off with water. So it goes on like an oil, but then turns into a milk with water and washes straight off. So it's so much better than using an oil to cleanse off your makeup because it turns to milk and washes away easily. So there you go, that's how to make a micellar oil using the Micromox material. Now the functionality from this product means it's sure to be a winner with consumers. We'll see this popping up in brands everywhere because it solves the oily residue of a cleansing oil or cleansing balm, but still gives you the gentle cleanse and effective cleanse for waterproof makeup. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.